Well, hello everybody. This is Josh. I uh, wanted to give you uh, just a couple pieces of follow-up information. The last time I had visited this project, we had the overall soaker hoses finished. We had the raised bed irrigation finished across three 10 by 4 beds and then one 4 by 40 bed. And I got a lot of questions about how to handle the aspect of city water pressure and how to calculate the gallons per minute and then how much pressure was needed and so I wanted to answer some of those questions here in a follow-up video and just kind of show you where I took things to figure out that problem because <laughs> quite honestly I wasn't sure what the answer was and so I had to do a lot of calculations had to call a lot of different companies and then finally figured out a solution that I think works well that actually opened up the opportunity to take rain barrels and push them out here to the raised beds. And so uh, I'll just kind of show uh, with my fancy camera work here on my cell phone the ability uh, to see. I'm about to winterize for a winter garden, so I just took out a lot of my summer crops. Uh, I'm about to put on the different hoop houses and kind of get things ready once I start to germinate my seeds in here. It was, before I did that I wanted to kind of capture what I did with the irrigation system tied to rain barrels and then also tied to the opportunity to push through a pump and I wanted to give you some of the details about how I calculated how many gallons per minute I was going to need to figure out the power of the pump I was going to need uh, to push out here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to the pump itself and then we'll go through some of those calculations. So this is the information I captured for everybody that kind of shows how I calculated the number of gallons per minute I was going to need to get enough pressure to push through those PVC pipes that I had drilled in order to get the soaker hose set up that we had. And so, um, so th these are the details. City pressure, uh, what I did to figure that out is I took a five gallon bucket and I timed how long it took to fill that all the way to the top and that was 40 seconds and so then I determined you know we're roughly at about 7.5 gallons per minute and then calculated that out by 60 uh, to get 450 gallons per hour now I didn't check my math before I started recording this but you kind of see the problem-solving process I kind of went through here um, so then I started looking at water pumps, started getting what their gallons per hour would be, and then dividing that down to get gallons per minute, and then I had to run it through that calculation to figure out that, for my instance, it was 40 seconds to fill it up, and so then I had to run through a calculation to get that, um, what it would be per 60 seconds, for example. So then I found a couple that were close, I mean, I, I got into this Ironton and I got several at Home Depot but they weren't enough gallons per hour so I but I found the Wayne pump which is 720 gallons per hour and this puppy is like designed to like take down lakes and all sorts of stuff where you can drain lakes and uh, anyway so that's the one I went with and I'm very glad I did I thought it was going to be too powerful but it was actually uh, not at all it was it's actually perfect as you'll see here in just a moment uh, so Northern Tool has this pump, and then um, let me go ahead and click this link. Northern Tool has the pump, and then also you can get the pump at Amazon, which is where I ended up getting it. It was, uh, I think, just a little bit better deal. Um, in this case, it looks like 160 bucks now. I don't know if it's still that price whenever you look I think I got it for a little bit less I think it was on sale whenever I got it but anyway I'll show you the pump here in just a second but um, that's just an image for you to reference here so that's how I figured out how many gallons per minute gallons per hour I had with my city pressure because remember I designed the whole system to work off the city pressure and then what happened was once I put this once I took the city pressure off when I realized all the chlorine was going to be killing the plants I then had to find another solution to to make that work which I'll walk through here in just a second so basically we get to a point where we need to cut down all 
of the chlorine, but then we also have, enough, have to have enough pressure to push the raised bed. Well, so it's not the best showing with all of these leaves that are coming down here in fall, but uh, I figured rather than blow the patio off, I'd create this video and then be able to share this with everybody. So this is the pump that is about one horsepower that will take the uh, water and you can do it a couple different ways I mean yeah you could come straight in from the city and you could go into the into the uh, inlet here but keep in mind the inlet is oh, I hope I'm informing here I don't have the manual in front of me but check the manual um, I think it's a one inch inlet that then goes to a three-quarter inch outlet and that's kind of important and you have to get the right type of hose that comes in you have to get a reinforced hose on the inlet because it's so powerful at the one horsepower that it'll collapse anything that's not a reinforced hose it was a related item that I could purchase on Amazon and so um, I was able to go that direction so with that reinforced hose again it was a related item on Amazon I just went ahead and went with it I've not had any problems with it it um, has allowed me to pull the water in and uh, the one horsepower has not crushed and collapsed the hose so uh, my system is pretty simple I um, I can come straight out of a rain barrel, so I have a, let's see, what is this thing, 130 gallon rain barrel, and I have three of these. If I don't have rain collecting from the gutters, I just zip the top off, and then I, um, I just put the hose in here, and it will, it will suck the water all the way down to the very bottom, not a problem at all. I have a, a boogie blue water filter that will dechlorinate the water. This is if I have to come straight out of the house. If I don't have rainwater at the time to collect from, then I push through the boogie blue and that is going to dechlorinate it and I just literally just set this on the top, let the I just let the water go in. I'll go ahead and just turn this on and show you. I just let the water go in just like that. And I just fill up 130 gallons. And I've got that all set then. That's going to dechlorinate it goes really fast and then um, the only thing that I, I recommend you do the the pump itself is not a self priming pump and so they recommend in the book that you take off uh, this fitting you unscrew this you fill this section up with water but I find that to be really cumbersome so what I do is I just hook my water source up to the inlet hose like so I just join these together and I push water into the inlet hose right here I just push it in and it will it will fill up the tank for me and then once I have it primed I'm able to just turn alright so I just want to introduce you here uh, to kind of the overall flow I have a uh, the boogie blue filter that I take straight from the house so it comes straight from the house into the boogie blue which then goes into a rain barrel um, I have approximately Oh, I think it's something like 400 gallons of rain barrel capacity, but then if I don't actually have rainwater in them, I can use the dechlorinator to fill up the rain barrel. And then I have a, a larger hose that's going to sit inside the rain barrel. That snakes down to the front of the pump. And then I have the Wayne one horsepower portable lawn pump. And that is what meets the standards necessary to push out all of the pressure needed out to the rain barrel. So basically, we turn this on, and you have to prime the pump first. I mean, it's not too loud. I mean, I'm right next to it, and it's, I'm able to talk over it. If I stand back a few feet, it's really not going to be that bad at all. Um, anyway, so that's going to take the, from the source water, which is coming from the rain barrel, into the rain pump, out the standard hose and that's going to go out to the raised beds. Okay, this will just show you what the pump does in terms of uh, power once it's hooked up. We have 10 rows and a 10 by 4 bed here. Um, I just actually took everything out for prepping for winter and so um, you see the power. This is actually a little bit reduced because I have the second bed connected here and um, if I need to I can I can turn the pressure all the way off on this second one and watch what will happen to the first one it'll pop up with more pressure so we have quite a bit of power available then if I want in this bed right here I'll just simply turn this one on turn this one off 
and you're going to notice here that we have quite a bit of pressure that's going to push through that whole network uh, to get out here to the bed. And then same thing, if I, I mean I just planted a bunch of seeds in here for example, so I'll vary the, the placement where the water hits simply by taking this bed, turning it on just ever so slightly, you're going to notice what happens. I'm able to take the pressure down on this bed and kind of distribute it between the two. And I can take it down to a trickle if needed as well. And then this bed will start to get some of that water and it'll start to push out as well. Uh, so the one horsepower pump has quite a bit of push on it and it is really what's necessary to take it from a rain barrel all the way through uh, to your raised beds. All right, and that's it. Just as a quick overview, we jump from you know one bed, I have three 10 by four beds that are all connected into this network, and then those jump all the way over here to another 10 by, and so the 10 by 40 bed is going to have the same pump capabilities as found uh, here with these other beds and all the irrigation that pushes through that one horsepower pump. Thank you.